Welcome back to Dota Pit season number two. Evil Genius is going up against Team Tinker. EG taking a convincing game one off the back of our TZ Naga Siren. I'm What Is Hip from High Ground TV. You're watching the Dota Pit season two brought to you by Sapphire, Radiant AMD, Team Twitch, Band. Tesoro, and Sennheiser. And with me is F4L. Ready for game number two? I am. Hopefully we get a bit better of a game. Hopefully no Naga Siren in this game. What are you saying? Uh, I mean, come on. You're not it's not the most hero. exciting <laughs> hero to watch play. It is fun to play, though. You know, I, I will say I'm guilty of fun to play. picking Naga and just, you know, turning, oh. turning on some young lean and time. splitting up I will, your, splitting I will up your say It's very cathartic. I, I am a fan of playing some Terrorblade, so I can sort of understand the farming uh, fascination with splitting up all your illusions and farming the whole map. Very relaxed, you know. Yeah, well, really we'll see if that makes its way into game two. Team Tinker have banned out the Lycan in the first round. The Razor, both are TZ heroes with EG on the dire side. I think that Lycan ban definitely warranted. Ogre and Brewmaster got in the boot from EG. They grabbed the Tidehunter and the Skywrath Mage. Mm. Team Tinker, they've grabbed the Wisp as well as the Necrophos. So a little bit new school here, the Wisp. We'll see how that works out for them. Definitely one of uh, EGM plays very well in that hero. So yeah, looking forward to seeing that one. Yeah, and Necrophos, it's sort of flavor of the month. I mean, I'm not entirely sold on this hero's strength. I think, uh, obviously, if you can get into the late game, very strong hero, especially with the Aghanims, is you can just win the game off the back of one Reaper Scythe. But that being said, the hero does have its struggles. You know, it's not very good at, if it gets bursted down, it's only good in these really long team fights. And if you have enough magic damage... You're most likely going to be able to kill him as he doesn't really want to be building that BKB. And uh, Skywrath, pretty good hero against the Necrophos. <clears throat> as like I said, he doesn't really want to build the BKB and Skywrath does have that nice silence up against the Necro. Yeah, agreed. And then Visage picked up here for Evil Geniuses and they have a couple options with the way that they want to run this. Traditionally, it was Zai that was mostly remaining. playing the Visage and uh, it's changed a bit recently. Beer has been playing the Vistage and kind of a little bit more of a mm -hmm. core role. They put a little bit more farm on it. They go for a very quick Aghanims. Uh, and it has been pretty effective. I mean, Vistage with an early Aghanims is pretty brutal, especially you know if they go for something like the Drow and they have the extra aura. It can be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But EG, they're not a team that really relies on the Drow-Vistage combo. They have picked Vistage alone quite a bit. Yeah, I think um, I wouldn't... Never mind. Lycan is banned. Okay. I was going to say, you know, they could do their Visage Lycan, but Lycan obviously first banned against EG, especially when they're on Dire Side. And usually, though, we I think they've only played Core Visage when they had a THD, so probably not going to be seeing that Core Visage this game. I expect to see Zai playing that hero, although we haven't really seen PBD play much Skywrath, so... I suppose there is still that possibility that Fear is going to be playing that Visage. And Team Tinker picking up the Bristleback. So this is a very similar type of style to what Tongfu Old Boys were running at, I, I think it was I-League. And they had remaining. really oh, good success boy. once they got into the late Radiant game with the Bristleback and Necrophos. And it looks like EG is going to be picking up the Pudge. So... Maybe not taking this game too seriously. You know, we've seen EG a couple times when the game doesn't matter that much. They start picking up, you know, some Huskars and some Jungle Dooms. You know, this is just, this is the EG way of life. Yep. So, Pudge some experimentation. Be yeah, I mean, there is something to be said for when you're seconds. fairly confident you're in good shape. Uh, picking go, things a little bit outside of the ordinary Evil in these games. Geniuses. Especially when you're a team like EG bad. who... I think do have some troubles uh, with scrimming like in general. I think scrimming is an issue for them. Uh, certain players of the team do not take it as seriously as others. So maybe they try to bring a little Ten bit of that into this remaining. game. And mostly I'm flaming Artor at the moment. So, Oh, Five come on. Seconds remaining. <laughs> <laughs> but Pudge for Evil Geniuses. Yep. And so, it'll be interesting to see who's going to be playing that. If we're going to see a Zy Pudge, a Fear Pudge, maybe. It's definitely not going to be a Universe. I mean, not a... Uh, it's definitely not going to be an RTZ Pudge. You don't think, I think it's going to be the RTZ no. Pudge? There's absolutely no way that RTZ can even play that hero. <laughs> Radiant Team Bang. Oh, 
<laughs> Second round of bands, Void and AA are banned out for Team Tinker. And Jakiro and Batrider are banned out from the Evil Geniuses. They last banned the Puck. And mostly, I imagine that's just because it's really hard to hook Puck if you're Ten Pudge, you know? Mm -hmm. gotta, gotta get that. Got to get that hero out of here. Make sure you can hook anyone Five on Five seconds so. remaining. And I think this last, band. this last pick will probably give us some insight as to... Oh, my God. Picking the Storm. Oh, boy. I remember PPD saying quite a few times that he would never pick Arteezy Storm, so... Hmm. Well, so there is actually no Arteezy hero right now. Cause it's a Pudge, man. You just have to believe. He, maybe he is going to be playing Pudge. That would be kind of interesting. Oh boy. Uh, I don't think I've actually ever seen him play Pudge. Like, I, I in any I game either. that I've been in Even or stream, any game like, that I've... Well, I don't I don't watch his stream very often, but I don't... Wow, you're not, you don't like the music? Is that what it is? Mm, no, I just don't like watching people play. Like, if I'm going to watch someone play, I want to be entertained, and I don't actually find Arteezy's stream that entertaining, to be honest. Well, Legion Commander is the last pick here. And uh, that's definitely... That yeah, is an Arteezy Storm. Oh, so. boy. Well. Yep. Maybe he finally convinced PPD to give him another shot. <laughs> it's like, Peter, please. <laughs> like he does with Ember, and then every time they pick Ember, Arteez is like, why am I playing this hero? Well, like. we'll see how it works out this time around. As, uh certainly an unconventional draft here. From yeah, Evil Fear, Geniuses. Fear definitely a good pudge. I've seen Fear play pudge quite a few times in matchmaking, so pretty experienced on the hero. And it looks like Tinker are gonna go with their Wisp seconds, and remaining. Legion Commander combination. So this is a pretty comfortable Five lineup for them. Remaining. Yeah, I haven't seen. I don't know if I've seen personally seen Sing Sing on Bristleback too much, but Legion Commander very popular for Team Tinker and yeah. Wisp I mean, before. it's not like Bristleback the hardest hero to play. That's, uh, that's you know, sort of just turn sort of just turn around and click your cool spray as much as you can. <laughs> well, some introductions for Evil Geniuses. Victorious in game number one, unconventional draft in game number two. It's gonna be Arteezy on the Storm Spirit, Peep PD on the Skyrath Mage, Zai is gonna be on the Visage in the mid lane. We've got the great Fear Pudge, and all the way down bottom, it's gonna be Universe on that type. Yep, and then on the side of Team Tinker, we're going to have PyCat playing the Legion Commander, EGM on the Wisp, Bulba playing the Support Witch Doctor, Sing Sing on the Core Bristleback, and Quickva playing the Necrophos. Not too far behind, and there's a concussive shot to try to slow down anything happening here. 30 seconds to it's going to be an easy lane Arteezy Storm Spirit, so throwback to Mason. So it is going to be a safe lane Double storm. Ring of protection. Tougher yes. ring of protection. Honestly, I 11 think armor. this build is actually probably the... Okay, I don't want to say it's the best build on <laughs> every hero, but it's actually extremely strong on these ranged heroes that are in the safe lane because at some point you end up tanking the tower and it actually That's mitigates a lot of damage that comes through from the creeps. And then it's going to mitigate... Pretty much any harassment that the offlane is going to deal out to you, so it's actually quite strong in my opinion. But I know some people think it's really dumb, but uh, I personally am a fan. I mean, I can see it against the bristleback. You know, that's a lot of physical harass. It seems reasonable. I'm not. I'm not going to hate. I'm not going to hate on it. But Pycat's going to be in the mid lane on the Legion Commander, going up against the Pudge, and uh, you know, I actually have no idea what this matchup looks like, but. It is a pudge, so I think there's the X factor available. Oh boy. I'm looking forward to this one. Universe is going to be matching up against Koikova, who is solo on the bottom lane. Mm -hmm. Paralyzed cast starting this one out. Arteezy taking a lot of oh, damage right. here. This is like not the kind of lane you want to be playing. <laughs> it's a storm spirit. No, 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 no. And uh, I mean, this is when the lane is not. I mean, this is when that starting item of the two ring of protections is actually not that strong when you're against the offensive tri lane because he doesn't have enough regen to stand against the slim. They're gonna run on through. Looks like they might be able to just kill Arteezy here. He's walking back into the woods. Concussive shots coming in. Wisp gonna be hit by that one. Now they're gonna try to turn it around. First blood for Arteezy killing EGM. Sing Sing now taking damage and what looked like a good start for Team Tinker might have just fallen on its head as Arteezy gets a double kill at one minute in. Oh my god. 
Well, what a disaster. That could not have gone worse. I mean, this lane was actually going really well for Team Tinker. I think they just overplayed their position just a little bit and maybe not expecting that much burst coming up from Zai on the Visage, but the Wisp, I mean, Zero's only at 400 HP, 450 HP, zero armor, and just gets disintegrated by EG's heroes. And I mean, they've basically thrown this lane away. Yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> I don't know how they're supposed to come back from that. Arteezy now has boots, Bassy. He is in completely fine shape, getting that double kill. And what a, man, what a complete disaster. Yeah. Team Tinker. And in the mid lane, Fear doing quite well against the Legion Commander, up to 10 CS against the 9 of PyCat. In the off lane, we're going to have. So, Universe versus Quake was Necro. I imagine Universe will have an easy time early in the laning phase, but it's going to get progressively harder as Quakefa gets more points than they just pulled the Sadist. And continuing on in this top lane, how are things going to progress? I mean, Team Tinker are still committing three heroes here, but when something like that happens, it almost feels like, you know, it's it's just over. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> they, shouldn't, they shouldn't be committing three heroes to this lane anymore. They're they should like, really... You kind of have to give up because... At this point, EG are going to try to push the lane, get the double stack pull going, and just deny them even more experience. And I think the correct response from Tinker would be to maybe have Bulba on the Witch Doctor stacking these Ancients, and then EGM on the IO double stacking the the jungle, like these two camps. And, you know, just come back through stacks. But I don't think there's any way they come back through kills in this lane. Yeah. And continuing forward, I mean... They just can't really seem to get too much out of this lane. And like you mentioned, EGM is just so delicate, very easy for him to get bursted down by Zai. And I'm interested to see it when Fear starts rotating out of this lane, starting to go to work on the Pudge. Is it Tranquil's finish? Probably either when he gets that level six or level seven is yeah. probably when we're gonna see some rotations coming out from Fear. And I think at this point in the the lane is actually going to be quite difficult for him, especially with the DD on Pycat, but this overwhelming odd spell is going to be doing so much damage. Yeah. Custom Shot going to come out, Sing Sing, charging down PPD. Might be an opportunity he, he, here. He's caught out a little bit out of position. He actually might fall here. Deer is rotating up, has an invis rune. PPD he has an taking invis a rune. lot of damage. And it looks like he is going to go down here. The Wisp going to do it. Oh, how many are kills they are they going to get in return? Around? Now Arteezy is here. They are far behind enemy lines. Fear is here, waiting for his opportunity. There's the hook onto Pycat. Pulls him away from Arteezy, who continues to spam out the overwhelming odds. Is going to bring him down, and Team Tinker actually doing just fine in this fight. Zai, he's going to fall as well. Double kill for Bova. So PPD with a bit awkward positioning gets caught out alone against the Wisp and Bristleback and just gets gooed down. They're able to catch up to PPD, take him down quickly, and then it turns into a 4 versus 3. I thought they might get one of the supports in trade, but unfortunately Fear hooked on to PyCat and, I mean, he just has too much life, and then yeah. he just was able to heal himself up. I think you're looking to pull away the Witch Doctor to Wisp in that one and yeah. blow them up instantly. But really good plays from Team Ticker, and that actually gets them right back into this game, especially in this aggressive try line. What a weird game we've had thus far. PPD stacking and pulling, trying to get some experience for himself, and Zai sitting behind Arteezy now. Here, <laughs> just continuing to sit in this mid lane farm up. Now it does have a level six, and uh, we'll see if he does go for the bottle after these tranquils have been finished up. And Quickfoot doing quite well in this safe lane. Goes for the Hand of Midas recipe as he's at 29 CS to the 20 of. Universe. Well, uh, here. well, that was an interesting self usage. What, who salved? Koikva. He salved at six, like six hundred life. <laughs> yes, seven hundred. <laughs> Gotta stay full, you know. High cap bottling up another double damage. This lane's only gonna get harder for. Yeah. yeah. I actually think. Uh, Although Pudge does have a thousand life, but I'm trying to think if there's a possible rotation that could net them a kill onto the Pudge. Because they really want to secure some dual wins, really, for this Legion Commander to get our snowballing. And 
now they're just sitting up in this top lane and this this game is just really awkward now i mean is mine fear is farming which is great but uh i can now activates the double damage rune he's gonna rotate around here does have dual available ravage is available for universe as well but he's gonna have to use that immediately otherwise he's just gonna get dual he's gonna get dual reaper's nice available that's gonna slam down there's a dual one by cat Yep. yep, and that's very important for Pycat. It's really important that you get these first couple duels to succeed, and that is quick with Midas as well, so... And also a 40 second death timer on the side of the universe, so... I mean, both of those very important things. Not only winning the duel, but getting the kill during Reaper Scythe to add that additional death timer. Yep, and... I mean, in addition, Fear... He went for the uh, the level six hook there. Now, now level seven has the full range and missed. But now they're gonna go on Arteezy in the top lane. He's taking damage. There's the wand trying to make it out of here. It looks like he is gonna be okay. Zai gonna turn around, try to nuke down Bulba, who is taking a lot of damage. Voodoo restoration going to work though, and he's finally healing three heroes at once. Yep. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. It looks like PPD still lingering in this bottom lane. Not really accomplishing too much with his first rotation down here, but it is freeing up a lot of space for these Team Tinker supports, as this top lane is pretty much... Uh, I mean, it, our EG can't fight right now while uh, PPD isn't here. And Arteezy is almost to his level 6, a really important level for him, obviously, because he gets that ball lightning. So, I mean, this tri lane is going to be pretty much of no threat after he gets level 6, unless he runs out of mana. As long as he plays conservatively, it should be pretty easy for him to stay alive. Maybe they have a little bit of a better initiation tool. Bristleback may be a bit too tanky to kill, but Wisp and Witch Doctor have to be popular targets for him to go after. And another rotation, like High High Cat yeah. has the haste rune. It's going to wear out right now, but if they can get this duel off on RTZ. Not yet level 6, so he's still stuck. They're going to have to oh. dive way into the woods. This did not go well the last time they had to do that. Is there going to be any rotations, though, from EG? Those the duel on RTZ. Zai trying to nuke off someone. No, no dual win, but Arteezy is going to go down. Fear is here. Pulls Bulba out of the woods. He gets brought down. Hooked. Visage has died as well, and now they're stuck in the woods. One is going to TP out. That's Pycat. Universe is here as well, and there is a TP scroll for the Bristleback. No relocate. And are they going to use Ravage for this? Yes, they are. Down is going to go sinking here sooner rather than later. They're going to try to man up, though. Fear using that rot. Fear actually getting pretty low. EGM using the overcharge, trying to keep Sing Sing alive. Whoa. Down goes Fear. Universe is going to die as well. Sing Sing still able to turn this one around. In comes the flare. He's still alive. This is a clowny fight in the woods. They've been back here for so long. And now finally, down goes EGM. Arteezy gets that one. And in the end, I don't even know which way that went. But definitely in favor of Tinker. Yeah, they lose they three the storm. Yeah, EG lose four heroes, Team Tinker only losing the Bristleback and the Wisp, and they forced out the rotation from the Tide as well as the Pudge, and the Ravage was used, so really good for Team Tinker. And they also killed Storm before he was level 6, so Arteezy already with two deaths before hitting that critical level 6, and oh, looks like Fear does find a kill on the bottom lane onto EGM. <laughs> and there's Pudge kill that. <laughs> Inevitably is missed. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. <laughs> Jesus. A little bit of all chat Some banter. all chat happening here. Pretty sure we don't have any rules against all chatting, and I, you know, I encourage it. I think it's, I think it's great. So, Fear going to continue to try to find some kills here, and Arteezy. So, safe lane Storm Spirit, do you still just go for the Orchid first? I mean, there's different ways of playing it. I've seen both the Orchid and the Bloodstone. Um... I want to say that there was a couple games where Mason, when he was on EG, would just pick up the Bloodstone first. And it looks like he is going to go for the Soul Ring, which I think is definitely the right choice. I think when you're in the safe lane on yeah, Storm, sense. you get the Soul Ring. But he could opt for either the Orchid or the Bloodstone first. I think both are good choices. The Orchid might be appealing because it helps him initiate on Pycat, who otherwise might just be able to duel him. Uh, but Bloodstone definitely gives you a little bit better scaling as you head further into the game. Yeah. And I think Bloodstone might actually be the better choice uh, so that you can survive through this duel. There's the pull on the Sing Sing. Fear is here. Gonna walk up, ult him. And Sing Sing is very dead. Blink picked up on the... Koikfa. I couldn't think of his name for a second. 
on the Necrophos universe, farming up his ancient stack, his bottle and arcanes. Only at 300 gold, so probably going to be a while before we see that Blink Dagger. Interestingly enough, he has the Stout Shield, which we don't really see too much on Tidehunters, as it doesn't stack with the Kraken Shell. But the one thing that you could say, I mean, about this delayed blink, he has gone for the arcane first. Is there's a storm spirit to help initiate? There's also, of course, the pudge. So yeah, uh, going for that. I arcane mean, first is just yeah, fear oh, just misses that hook narrowly. Not too necessary to be having the blink this early this skim. Yeah, Koikva, 1-0-0, 74 CS. It's been extremely quiet, but I think this is a situation that Koikova is quite comfortable in, where he's just sitting in his lane, farming up, and, you know, back when he was on Team Liquid, this is something we saw all the time. And on Team Tinker, it's been a little bit different since they've been changing roles so much, but now he is just going to farm like crazy. And Blink Dagger acquired on, <clears throat> acquired on the PyCat, so I imagine we'll see another duel very shortly. I would imagine either onto this bottom lane or maybe they'll go for something in the top lane, but EG having a lot of words in both bottom and top. They actually have really good words right now. A lot of vision here showing the bottom lane. Some sentries up here, sort of in the mirrored spot, making sure that's safe. And uh, Arteezy, yeah. after doing a little bit of jungle stacking, is going to go heal up. Looks like he is just going to continue on farming here. 1,500 gold in the bank for him, so not quite sure where he's going to be going yet, but we will find out soon. And... Quikva yeah, is going to be very Quikva. found out here. They even use the Ravage. The silence using Quikva is beyond dead. Yeah, and a bit of wasted time coming out from Pycat and Bobo. They choose not to smoke. They don't even have a smoke, actually. And they rotate to the top lane, but they realize, eh, we're probably not going to get much in the top lane. And it's also lane warded, so had they gone for that, it would have been a complete waste of time. Let's relocate in here. Gonna, oh no, it gets blown up by the Death Ward. Arteezy's here as well. Trying to get away, but needs to be careful. He doesn't need too much damage. EGM, the Wisp is gonna go down. PPD picks up that one. Pycat now trying to get on the way out of here. Does have press the attack in a second. That might heal him back up. Universe does not have the Ravage. He's just using that last fight. There's the press the attack. Flare coming through. PPD taking damage, getting right click down. There's the Gush. He's slowed down. Pycat's gonna fall. Tidehunter picking up that one. I'm not sure, did they mean to not relocate the Bristleback in that fight, or...? I have to imagine that was a, an accident. Okay. I mean, it seemed like, because cause he came in without anyone. Yeah, I imagine had he come in with the Bristleback, I think they just kill Pudge and everyone lives. Instead, they only kill the Pudge and two die on the side of Team Tinker. Well, they're gonna move forward. Here, he's able to grab EGM again. And... Nice grab there. Pretty big plays coming out from EG in the last couple minutes, or I suppose you could say a couple mistakes from EGM. Yep, and uh, they're gonna converge here on the top lane. Fear is here, PPD is here. Boykwa gonna run through. There's the blink dagger. Fear hiding. Do they know he's there? Oh, they now find him. Sing Sing he's finds him. Oh, he pulls in Volva close to him. But there's the Reaper Scythe. He's gonna go down. Vistage Birds are here. They're gonna drop those down. PPD drops down the ultimate. He wants to kill Boba. The damage is getting split very inefficiently, though. Wow. Down Absolutely ridiculous. Fear is dead for 70 seconds. That's basically forever. What a hero this new Necro is. It's actually just ridiculous, like, how much additional death timer you can have it just in one game. Arteezy is going to be going for the Bloodstone. That Soul Ring does build into it now, so that is a convenient transition for him. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Zai. Looking to probably create some pressure here, but needs to be very careful. He's very aware of the fact that he is an easy kill for Pycat. Mm hmm Looks like we're going to have Bulba farming up the mid lane on his Witch Doctor. He's up to 3 1 and 3 with oh, 17 Peter. CS. Peter just gets run, run down. <laughs> <laughs> You're all chatting about his death timer. It is yeah, like really ridiculous. I mean, absurd. it's 15 minutes in the game and he's got a 70 second death timer. Get up, make a sandwich. You know, come back around, still Get yourself a drink. Yeah. <laughs> Catch up on your favorite TV shows. Yeah, return a couple of emails, and no, you're uh. finally back in the game. <laughs> Two thousand gold now for Koi or for Universe rather on the Tide Hunter. So he's nearing that Link Dagger very, very quickly. Arteezy farming towards the Bloodstone, getting fairly close as well. Yep, 
He's about <clears throat> 1,500 away or so. It looks like Fear is going to be going for some sort of mobility at him here, whether that's the Force Staff or the Blink Dagger to help him get some initiations. And, uh, it, do, it looks like Quick was actually going to go for this Dagon build. Gets dueled on. In comes Sing Sing and EGM, and Universe going to go down. Don't think he won that duel, though. Yeah, he didn't win the duel. That's really unfortunate. So he's actually only won two duels, even though they've gotten four kills with this duel. So a bit unfortunate that they haven't secured the kills with the duel, but... You're shooting out those hooks, getting some more. Yeah, and like I said before that fight started, it looks like Quickfa is actually going to go for the Dagon build on this Necrophos. So that is pretty exciting. The single target bursts just kill heroes very quickly. You saw this yesterday. Ush from Navi US was using that build. And, and it was really scary. Yeah, you can certainly sink, you can kill pretty much anyone. Yeah, and it was really scary for Navi US in that game, even though they were extremely initiation ahead. Initiation on Wispin. He is gone just as fast as the initiation starts. Jesus. Yeah. And I mean, Team Tinker are about 5,000 gold ahead and about 1,000 experience. So, I mean, we saw the effectiveness of the Dagon plus Blink Necro in that game, There's and the they were behind. Bottom lane, single target just on Bulba. There's the anchor smash. Zai now at the target. He's going to get dual brought down. Hook, though, back here. Pulls him near the tower. Arteezy comes forward. Sing Sing just about to go down. Still pers persevering, though. And now, oh, Pycat going to try to make it out. And Arteezy darting Can forward does not the, have enough for a ball. Off. There's a reaper scythe. Arteezy, he's dead for 73 seconds. Turning back around, PPD on the run. And now EG, they're the ones who try to make it out of here. But it does not look like PPD is going to make I it. Dies so for the very ending of that urn. And Absolutely disgusting. Yeah, and uh, this game does not feel good for EG with these heroes dying for so attack. long. Yeah, and I mean, uh, this is not a type of draft that you really want to be behind from. Especially when you have this core punch. I mean, it's just, it's not going to scale well unless you're very ahead. He's only got the blink. He's only sitting at 1400 HP, and with only 7 armor, that's actually not very tanky. Universe moves forward, kills each game, and gets a little overzealous. It's been a weird game for each game. I think he's done a lot of things that he would normally do. Yeah. Probably dying a bit more than normal. Although, I would say three of them have been because he's been Pudge hooked, so. Yeah, that's true. Maybe Late, struggling just a bit playing count. against Pudge, yeah. Bulba. Pycat. He's gonna go for the Yeah, Pycat continuing to farm this top lane. Looks like he's gonna be going for that BKB rush. Gonna be very good against the lineup of EG. They actually have nothing really damage wise against the BKB. This game, this game feels like it's falling further and further away from EGRTZ. I think gonna have to pull something out of a hat on the Storm Spirit and see if it happens. Yep. Sing Sing gonna go ahead and pick up the Sange, maybe for either Heaven's Halberd or Sange and Yasha. <clears throat> I think both builds are fairly good, but it, he does go back for an additional Overclub, so probably looking for a BKB himself, recognizing that. Hey, EG actually can't do anything if we get these BKBs on our core heroes. Yeah. Tinker looking for initiation. Most likely on RTZ, I think Pycat is in the vicinity. Ace it up, gonna move forward. There's a zip from RTZ. He still has a lot of mana left. They're gonna move forward. He's gonna be all the way in the back here, continuing to zip back. And does not have enough mana at the moment for, or uh, rather CD for the TP, but I think he'll be fine. Yeah. I mean, Tinker just probably assuming that he is TP'd away by now, so. Not going to continue chasing our search for him in the woods. Quakefaw on his necro is okay, under the cover of Invis, so... This seems like someone's going to die here. Uh, it's only a Dagon one, so I'm not exactly sure if they can actually kill anyone. I mean, they know that okay. there's someone linked here, as there is a tether to nowhere. <laughs> that was an odd play. <clears throat> I mean, I didn't think they could actually kill anyone, and there was too many heroes on the side of EG to go for a kill. Moving along, Fear hiding in the woods, looking <coughs> to grab someone and pull them into his clutches. Let's see if he's able to find someone. Getting Pycat would be pretty huge, but he is also hidden in the woods. Dyer's but the tier 2 tower is just attack. dying, Arteezy wandering forward. There's the hook going to go out, that's going to miss. Now they know exactly where Fear is. He's gonna have to blink away. Special tactics by EG do not seem to be working out. Yep. 
And it looks like Zai is trying to work on his agonims, but I think it's going to be too little too late by the time he gets that item. Well, Fear does grab Sing Sing. That's a pretty hard hero to kill. Relocate in Lucinity. Sing Sing, no, he goes down. And now EGM, he's going to fall as well. There's no way he makes it out of this one. Double kill for Zai. That's a step in the right direction. Yeah, really good hook by Fear. And they were able to just isolate and kill the Bristleback quite quickly. And that pretty much is the end of that push. It, There was this attempt by EGM to save the Bristleback by relocating back, but in the end he just falls himself. Fear, off the mark on that hook. Has Quickfoot completed any... No, no new components to the Aghanim, so he's still about 1600 gold away from the Aghanim Scepter. Kind of surprised that he decided to quit skilling this Dagon, to be honest. Zai looks like he has been found out here. It's gonna be hard for us to make it out of this one. Cast, there's the duel. Death Ward goes down, Reaper's Scythe, and they use three ultimates. And Zai is very dead again for 70 yeah. seconds. Jesus. I mean, we've already seen four... I want to say at least four Reaper Scythe kills this game. So that's an additional... <laughs> an additional two minutes on these death timers already. And, we see and that though. actually... Oh, go ahead. That actually translates into a golden experience advantage every time you get a kill with Reaper Scythe. It's just not farming, right? Yeah, you're just not farming. Is under attack. Yeah, it's a rough, it's a rough life playing against this new Necro and... Arteezy is doing okay in the farm department here. Has ten charges on the bloodstone. This is kind of a this is kind of a balancing act though. If these if he loses a big fight and these bloodstone charges go down, it becomes really hard for him to sort of build them back up again. So yeah. the next team fights are going to be very important for EG. Yeah, and they really have to win these fights before the BKBs come out on the side of Tinker. Looks like Pycat. Uh, Nearly has his BKB completed, about 200 gold away from his. Sing Sing with a Mithril Hammer in the base, so he's about 1,000 gold from his. And I think once they get the two BKBs, it's going to be very difficult for EG to find a solution because the Storm's not really going to be doing any damage. You know, unless they're somehow able to catch them out before they can use the BKB, but they don't really have any instant stuns. It's going to be quite difficult. Far and away, Koikva is topping the net worth. And this is not a surprise. He is 5 1 and 1 with 140 CS. Yeah. Right behind him. And the Midas. Pycat. Yeah, he's the Midas. Enhancing, enhancing that farm speed as well. And Arteezy right in that same area. And EGM looks like he might die again. Can they get the hook? No. Oh, now they're going to move forward, though. He gets tethered away. Here. Maybe looking to line up the hook that. here. EGM looks like he is just uh, he's dead again. Well, hook off the mark by fear. But this, this game's getting Arteezy weird. He does find Koikva in the jungle. It doesn't look like he really wants to go for that kill. Doesn't know where the other heroes on Team Tinker are. They are gathering up, though. They're going to take down their first <clears throat> tier one tower of the game if they do continue out this push mm -hmm. here. Can Koikva. They might not even be able to get this because Koikva is bringing out his BKB, so they might look to actually oh, yeah, take Pike this fight. Has it too. I think they are going to get I mean, the tower, not quite but... Pi Cat, sorry. We're going to push him away. Pi Cat here. There's the BKB. Drops down. Misses. Now silenced up. BKB used. A little bit of a crazy fight. Universe. There is the Ravage. Down goes the tower. And it looks like Pi Cat fighting away. The Death War, though, going to work. Bulba, how is it still going? In the end, it's going to be Koikva who aches it out of the better of that one. Gets a double kill as well. Now Pi Cat on the way out. He's going to go down. Visage. Takes him down and well, just barely his eyes gonna make it out. And, You've uh, got to be kidding me! I thought that fight was a complete disaster for Team Tinker, and then somehow Bulba is able to channel his Death Ward for about four seconds with the Aghanim Scepter, dealing so much damage to these three heroes that were surrounding him, and Team Tinker turned what looked like a disaster into, I would say, pretty even exchange. I think. So they lose the Bristleback Legion Commander and Witch Doctor for the Storm, Tide, and Pudge. Actually a bit of an advantage since only the supports Lord. live for EG. Sing Sing, they pull him back. There's the flare. He is gone. Sing Sing disintegrating. Even the tanky Bristleback falling at the hands of those three heroes. Yep. Looks like Orchid might be gone here with all the BKBs coming up. Go yeah, right I think for, Hex is the, yeah, right for the Hex. Choice. I think that makes yeah. sense. With 
know, they're already gonna be buying the BKB, so Orchid's very bad against them. Yep. Radiant and if they're able to get... I think it's just so that they can kill this Bristleback. I don't think they're actually too worried about Dyer's any shooting on the Pycat. Because, I mean, we didn't... He wasn't actually that effective in the previous team fight. And if they're able to initiate on this Bristleback, hex him up before he's able to use the BKB, blow him up, that's a significant portion of damage that Tinker are gonna be missing in these team fights. Gito, they're clearing out this uh, Roshan and... They have the medallion. Looks like they're going to be able to accomplish this. They're going to lose probably the top tier 2 for it. Looks like they, yep, they're going to get this tier 2 tower in exchange for Roshan and... Oh god, he's in. Oh, he's in. What is... He's in this. Oh, okay. The, yeah, <laughs> very hard to see. But, uh... I really wish Valve actually needs to change uh, Invis and double damage on Wisp and double damage on Razor. They're like impossible to see. It's really frustrating, actually. EGM scouting out that one, but Roshan is finished here, and Arteezy the one to pick it up. EG on the bouncing app, but I mean, the later this goes, Pudge becomes pretty irrelevant. There's gonna be yep. a lot of BKBs, which negates a lot of the damage. EG, so you have to favor Team Tinker as this moves forward. Certainly do, and I mean, Sing Sing really not getting much closer to his BKB, still about a thousand gold away from that. Well, maybe a little less than that now, and he's really struggling in this game. It seems like every fight he gets initiated on and just dies before he's able to cast any spells, but hopefully that'll be alleviated with this BKB purchase. I think it mostly comes down to how quickly Arteezy is able to farm up this Hex. He's getting close, but he's still pretty far away. Yeah. He needs to finish that Mystic Staff and Void Stun, so... Arteezy is going to continue farming up here. Still doing a good job of keeping pace with Pycat, but unfortunately the other safe laner, Koikva, is just much more farmed. 1800 gold, Blink Dagger, Aghanim's completed. Boots of travel as well. We'll see if he levels up the Dagon now to try to get that single target burst up. That is a real thing on this hero. Radiance top yeah. tower is under attack. Well, it does give you 400 at the current level, Dyer's and the cooldown reduction doesn't really matter on a hero like Necro because you really want to be comboing it with your Radiance ultimate. So maybe you just keep it at level one and then opt for some other items. They're going to move on to Arteezy. There is the duel. Hook is going to miss. They tried to hook him away from a Death Ward. It's going to go down. Arteezy is going to fall. Dual win there. Koikva is here, Reaper Scythe still available, and up comes, he comes from the Aegis, is going to make it out of here, TPing as he goes, and just barely makes it out. Koikva tried to hunt him down, might lose a couple of these Visit Familiars. Yeah, I mean, good thing that Arteezy had the Aegis there, so he doesn't end up losing any Bloodstone charges, because they're just so valuable right now, and... Yeah. It's actually going to be quite difficult for Arteezy to play in this game against the duel because EG don't really have any real ways to protect him. And now they're going to move forward in EG. I'm trying to blow him up. Beerus here as well. Ravage turning this around. EG trying to take this fight. But Pycat still alive. Finally going to fall in the end. In comes Koikwa. Moves forward. Reaper Scythe on his eye. He's gone. Deleted. Deleted from the game. Enjoy your nap. He's dead for a little over 80 seconds this time around, but pretty soon we're going to start seeing those ridiculous death timers. I mean, we saw in that game yesterday, there's yeah, like, what, a 140 second away. death timer? Oh, God. My God. Yeah, because if you buy back and then you die again to a Reaper Scythe, the death timers actually just get insane. Yeah, net worth is still pretty similar. XP equaling out slowly, but... I think the hero composition, you have to consider that a lot more than the lead with the Reaper Scythe, yeah. with the BKBs coming up for Team Tinker. I mean, in theory, Pudge can scale into the late game if he is able to get enough Flesh Heap stacks, and the issue with Pudge is always, how can I farm items? Because, I mean, he's only sitting at 90 CS compared to... I mean, the lowest core on Tinker is up to 132 on... The side of Pie Cats, so actually not doing that terrible of a job compared to the other course. And they're gonna get a very this... easy tier two here though in the mid lane. And if Arteezy is paying close attention, he would be able to see the Heart Stopper aura as well as noticing that his HP is going down a little bit, but doesn't look like they're gonna be able to get a kill anyways. Arteezy narrowly makes it out of that one. Quick zips. 
Yeah. Quickway doesn't have enough damage to solo kill him. And continuing on forward here, Fear. We'll see if he can get some uh, some more hooks off. Needs to make some connections here. But needs to be careful. I mean, Sing Sing is pretty hard for him to kill now. Seems pretty much impossible if he hooks him. Might need some assistance. PPD is here. Is going to have the uh, Mystic Flare. I mean, if they run into two heroes, I don't even think that's a fight they can win. Ghost Scepter is the choice here for Fear. Is this going to be an Ethereal Blade? Coin for me. Mm. I think he needs to go something like a, an AC, perhaps. Because he's only sitting at 9 armor, so... The Bristleback and the Legion Commander are going to be doing quite a lot of damage to Fear on this Pudge currently. So maybe he could even opt for something like a Shiva's Guard could be a possibility. And Arteezy is just farming up the Hex here. I think that's what EG are waiting for. Zai has his Agadim, so he is able to push out these lanes slowly. Arteezy now has enough for that Sheep Stick. Yep. <clears throat> and he does complete the hex right now. Probably going to be sending out the flying courier shortly to go ahead and pick that up. Oh, Hi, an ethereal blade. Oh boy. Oh. oh you know, actually, ethereal blade makes a lot of sense because if Fear's not the one getting dueled, he can actually That's just true, ethereal yeah. blade either. He's attack. just going to ethereal blade whoever gets dueled. So that'll actually allow Arteezy to deal with this duel much easier than he is currently able to deal with it because. At the current moment, if PyCat does decide to BKB and then blink dual RTZ, there's really no solution, but yeah. now EG with the solution. Well, that's the Ethereal Blade. We'll see how that comes into place. Also, we'll give him a little bit more burst if he's trying to get someone solo, but I think that dual interaction is going to be very important. Yeah. Boykova still farming up here. Has an ultimate orb. Could be a Hex of Zone. Could be something like Scotty. Kind of depends where they want to bring this. Scotty on who? On Necro. Oh, I think it's going to be a Probably, I mean, most likely. Bye, yeah. so. Cat. Maybe look for I mean, something here. I mean, it could be a Scotty, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's more likely. It's yeah, give them some additional lockdown, especially under the Storm Spirit. Really important. Our TZ is up to 2,000 gold. It looks like maybe he's saving for buyback at the moment. Although you really don't want to be buying back, especially when you have like 10 charges on your Bloodstone. As it is going to reduce that timer greatly. It's going to reduce it by 40 seconds, so. So if he gets to Reaper Scythe, then uh, a little less of the aggressive, the aggressive death timer for him. Maybe that's the counter to Necro. Counter to Necro is buying Bloodstone. Bloodstones. <laughs> Excellent finish up here. Oh, I mean, you can't buy back, right? So you just you just rely on the bloodstone charges to reduce your death timer. Artizi yeah. zips away. His uh, his hex finished up. So. Oh my! Boba has a shadow amulet. Are we serious? <laughs> Two days in a row. Two days in a row. I mean, I know it feels good to win with shitty items, but come on. <laughs> He's just using it walking through. There's a smoke purchased up. And Team Tinker going to go on the aggressive here with that Hex finished up. But EG, one step ahead of them, already smoked up. Wandering through, I think these smokes, they might run into each other in the jungle here. Arteezy is very far behind, though. It's, yeah, it looks like he does pick up his Hex and an Ogre Club. Going to be working towards that BKB. Oh, this smoke is going to miss. Looks like EG is aware of Tinker's plan to push through the mid lane. It's, they just drew on the mini map. Yep, and uh, and EG are just going to sit on the high grounds. Yeah. Make sure that they don't get the drop. There's the smoke dispelled. Pycat's going to know what's happening. Arteezy getting away. Zai looking a little frantic. There's the duel turned on. But Beer pulls oh. him back. What a nice move there. That's going to negate that quite a bit. Fair universe moves forward, but there's two BKBs. That Ravage does absolutely nothing. It does seem to make Tinker back up a little bit. Zai going to barely make it out of this one. Not sure how he pulled that one off. Now Sing Sing caught by the arrow, but do they have enough damage to actually kill him? There's Mystic Flare. No, he's still alive very easily. Arteezy farming top lane and a big engagement there, but nothing actually happening. No deaths. Arteezy actually TP'd away after the hook came on the Bristleback. I think they actually might have been able to kill Sing Sing there, but... Maybe a little bit of miscommunication, or RTZ just not wanting to risk maybe dying to the Hex on Necrophos, but... Oh, he does get Hexed up. 
Oh god, there's the relocator. TZ needs to be careful, zips away. Does not really want to get sight. There's the scythe moving in. That's gonna kill Zion Universe here as well. EGM taking lots of damage, and he is gonna go down. Not able to bring anyone back. Ethereal Blade there popped off on Sing Sing. There's the silence as well. He's gonna go down. RTZ zipping back and forth. Mystic Flare cleaning up, and Universe wanted to secure that kill. Gem drops on that one as well, and Universe has a refresher. It's done. He's a refresher? Yeah. He's got the parts on the stash, oh, and he's got boy. the perseverance. And I mean, we saw that last fight. It was actually quite close, even though he completely whiffed the Ravage. I mean, both PyCat and Sing Sing were able to get their BKBs off during the Ravage, so... EG... Uh -oh, Peter. ...showing this is not lots person. of life. Oh boy, people do this. Whoa! <laughs> Birds in the way. Uh, that hook wouldn't have connected. Yeah, I don't think so. They drop two birds there on Pycat. There's the Ethereal Blade moving in. Arteezy wants to turn this one back around. There's the Hex. They're going to kill him without even using the pole. Suddenly, four heroes are dead from Team Tinker. EG finding some wiggle room hmm. in this game. And I bet Bulba is just mad at himself right now for buying a Shadow Amulet. Because honestly, if they start losing this game, I want to say it's going to be because he's not purchasing a BKB. Because a BKB Death Ward in these team fights would be really. I mean, they have nothing to stop it except for the Pudge. Uh, I just remember. Yeah, and if Pudge is getting close enough to dismember you, he might already be dead with the Death Ward going off. So. 1800 gold even for Universe. He is. Wealthy. Yeah. Net worth Koikova still in the lead here. Arteezy not too far behind at this point, and we'll see where the He's item almost got his goes BKB. Lovely. And I mean we haven't really talked about it much, but Koikova's hero is just gonna keep scaling better and better into the late game the longer this game goes, so you know, I think even though Universe has gotten this refresher, I think it opens up a window for EG, but I still think that as this goes later and later into the game, that Team Tinker definitely have a solid advantage. Yep, and uh, <laughs> this game is just, it's, it's in its in awkward town now with the, the Pudge. I mean, this is when Pudge starts to fall off a little bit. This Ethereal Blade will definitely help him. It looks like they might be looking to smoke up. Do they have a smoke? No, they're just grouped up. I think. I might think Team Tinker is smoking, and half of them are, but they're just wandering into the Roche pit. There's a Vicious Familiar here that's going to spot that one out, and EG not going to let this happen uncontested. An Illusion going to spot out Universe here. They now should know that he has that Refresh Orb. They're paying attention. Hook going through. Fear grabs up on Sing Sing, but then blinks away. That was pretty cheeky. And they're just trying to make this as tough as possible for them to actually take this. Yeah, there's no way that they can actually rush, especially not against the, uh, yeah, and it looks like Bulba is going to go ahead and buy that Ogre Club. I'm not opting to go full Shadow Blade. That's, that's the face of regret if I've ever seen one. <laughs> yes, I bought the Shadow Element. Yes, I'm still buying an Ogre Club. <laughs> Bulba, please. I mean, he'd actually be quite close to a BKB at this point. And uh, EG just still posturing around. Roche not easily being able to be, uh, be taken by either team here. Now EG may be making a move. BKB now completed on Arteezy, so he's going to have a nice 10 second uh, invulnerability in this next team fight. Do they go? Looks like, yeah, they're going to start Roche with Arteezy. And it looks like Team Tinker have an idea that this might be going on. Yeah, and they're going to scout it. Some wild hooks happening here by Fear. Not able to get anything done there. Sing Sing. Poking his head in the Roche pit. And uh, the Roche dance has begun here. There is a lane pushing in top, but with no one here assisting it. We should be able to push that one back. Pretty good wave, though. Four range creeps. Yep. EG just staying grouped up here. I mean, with the double ravage, there's a very good chance for them to win the fight, especially if they catch them BKB uh, off. And oh, there, there's the initiation. They're going to go on to PyCat. They need Universe to follow this up. There's one ravage. He's going to get it off. PyCat does get off the BKB, though. PyCat moving forward. Duel goes off. Second ravage happens. Koikma is going to go down. Yes, he does not get off anything. PyCat is going to win the duel. This fight all spread out. Arteezy going to work, though. Gets a double kill. And now they're just chasing down Zai. Looks like he is going to fall here in the end. Arteezy now trying to get away from this fight as well. 
crazy fight there. All right, I guess I'm just gonna eat crow because EG actually have no detection for Volva, so he's actually <laughs> able to get off a full, like a pretty much full channel duration death ward in that team That's fight so because EG don't have any detection. Oh, Arteezy suicide, so he doesn't get Reaper Scythe. That really smart play. It's like I makes... am not getting Reaper Scythe. <laughs> Worth that one extra charge. He had a fair amount of charges there. Quakeva so. does end up buying back in that fight, so his buyback is now on cooldown for seven minutes. But it looks like they're gonna go towards Roshan, pick up the Aegis for him, and EG burned pretty much all of their spells on the Quakeva. The two Ravages, they hit the Wisp and the Necro, as well as. And then they drop the Skywrath ult, but then this Legion Commander and Bristleback, and we've said it before, once they pop their BKBs, they're pretty much invulnerable during the duration, and they just did massive amounts of work in the back of that team fight. Yeah, I can't able to get that BKB off before I think the second Ravage, and Arteezy just not able to do quite enough. I mean, he did do well in that fight, but possible for him to kill some of these heroes. I mean, even a hero like Sing Sing. BKB off is still very hard for a hero like Storm to kill if he doesn't have more sheep stick up. Yes, indeed. It looks like PyCat is invisible in the top lane. They might be able to actually find this kill on Tazai. I think if he just duels him and then they get a blink. Yeah. Press the attack. There's the duel. Boy, we're going to come in and oh boy. 93 seconds. Uh, no down. buyback. No bad back on Scythe, that's actually really important because well, he does have their AC. Yeah, he, well, he got Scythe anyway, so he's not buying back. Poor, poor guy. Dead for basically ever. Can't buy back. Boy. Well, EG, we'll see what they can do here, but with one hero down, this might be the beginning of the end for them. Almost still just spamming out the Shadow Amulet. Trying to make yep. that purchase worth it. And looks like Universe is going to be going for the ultimate or probably going to be moving on to a Hex. So, and it looks like they're just going to start sieging this tower. Sing Sing does pick up his Basher. Yeah, they have the AC on PyCat, so a reasonable item for us. Maybe he could have gone for a Shiva's, but honestly not much physical damage coming out from the side of EG, so Basher Raxes. is a fine choice. Raxes are going down though. Sing Sing is just standing in the front, going to work. Not too much that can be done. Stop him. Bulba standing in the back here, waiting. EG now does have the double tied ultimate. Ravage is available. Let's see if they want to initiate there. Arteezy goes forward, pops off the BKB. There's one Ravage. Pycat turns on one. Universe not going to get the second Ravage off. He goes down in the duel. Looks like no, he is not. Creeper Sight as well, and that might be the end. Can they actually sustain through this? Death Ward going out. Bulba. Not really getting anything done with that. Arteezy too far away. Sing Sing now back up. Arteezy caught. He has no mana left. He gets four staff back. But is that going to be enough? No. Down goes the Rax here. And Universe not able to get off that second Ravage with a nice BKB by PyCat. Darting back into that fight. Turning on that duel to avoid the second one from going off. EG lose the fight with it. A set of Raxes. Yeah. Looks like they're probably just going to lose this top Rax as well. No yeah. double Ravage. Nice hook there by Sing Sing. Or uh, onto Sing Sing, but... Can't actually kill him. Mm. Maybe they can hold on to this set of racks. Depends how aggressively Team Tinker want to play this. And there's no mana on Pycat, so they might actually just back off here. We are going to Arteezy continuing to farm up here. And, uh, well. This game slowly, again, Tinker is just getting more and more advantage here. Net worth was very close for a little bit, but. One Rax now down. Three little geniuses. And there is no Naga to carry them through the very late game here. Relocate moving forward. EGM is here. And he's just going to flash onto Sing Sing. He's going to start to go to work on these Raxes. Force an initiation before Universe is back up. Arteezy moving forward. There's the duel. And can they get anything done? Fury is able to grab one. But Arteezy just goes down. The Death Ward is too much in combination with the Legion Commander. Down goes Peter. The Skyrath Mage is going to fall. Sky and Sing Sing is still... Full HP, gonna go back to work on these Raxes, and that feels like it might be the end for EG. Hook misses by fear. Yeah. The unconventional draft just not gonna work out this time around for Evil Geniuses, barring some miracle here. Yeah, I don't think this this punch pick really didn't pay off for them. He's just getting outscaled by this Legion Commander, and honestly, Legion Commander, it's sort of like a better Pudge in the sense that Duel is similar to Dismember. 
and you don't have to kill yourself to kill people with the rock. And uh, I mean, you you obviously don't have the repositioning tool with the hook, but I think it's just overall a better version of HUD. Oh, Jesus is gonna kill Gordon though. That was a long range zip. Something at least. When you have a when you have a fat storm like this, it's hard to just duck out of the game because he does have such high potential. Killing Quickfoot yeah. there, but Quickfoot's head for a long. Yeah, I mean the problem is just in these team fights, EG really can't do anything against these two BKBs because if let's say they wait to use the Ravages, then like wait for the total BKBs to wear off. I think they're actually just going to lose the team fight before they're able to get them off just because they can duel someone and if they try to ravage first then on RTZ, he's dead well, that's a lot of damage I mean Pycat just takes a couple of fight, couple of swings here and he's got a lot of damage he's gonna pop the BKB get on out of this one not wanting to fight Bulba in full retreat does have a BKB of his own so I think the only way they can win now is if they're able to catch out both, I would say they need to catch out all three cores in these Ravages, in the double Ravage. And I just feel like that's very unlikely, and Bulba does finish his Black King Bar now, so... Only the Pudge Dismember is going to be able to cancel that up. Well, if there's anyone that can pull it off, it might be Universe on Tidehunter. We'll see if he's able to get the proper initiation to get EG back into this game. Now that they're two Raxes down, it certainly looks very bleak for them. EGM just trying to make something happen. He has died a lot this game. 13 deaths for him, but it seems like it hasn't mattered too much with Pycatch just scaling so well. With the Necrophos doing a lot of work as well. Yeah. And quick up to 4,000 gold. I'll be interested to see what he decides to pick up. He does have buyback available, so probably not going to be looking towards a big item until he has that available to him again. As he's going to probably need to save up about 2,200 gold. Heart for the Bristleback. He continues yeah. to get tankier, even harder to kill. Yeah, and that's a big problem. I don't actually think they can kill Sing Sing anymore. Yeah. Quick pause here from Arteezy. <coughs> I mean, they were able to kill him a couple times before he popped the BKB with just a bunch of magical bursts. But I don't actually think they're going to be able to kill him during the hex or pull duration, and then he's just going to get off his BKB at that point. Yep, and still pause underway here. We'll see what the situation is. Uh... So, I think if you're EG, you try to push out both of these lanes with Mega Creeps and then maybe go for like a smoke play. The only issue being that all the heroes on Team Tinker have buyback, at least for the cores. So, actually, Sing Sing currently not with buyback, so. EG probably not aware of how much gold he has, although they might guess since he just purchased a heart, but... Yeah, it looks like they are going to smoke gank. Here they go, they're going to march on through here. I think they know that they, they basically just have to win a miracle fight, and a big smoke gank like this might be the way they can make it happen. Team Tinker is rather grouped in this bottom lane here. Icat is here. Drop down the red for vision there. They move forward once. Are they going to try to get the second Ravage off? Not even going to need it. There's the refresh. Are they going to continue on moving forward here? Koikwa is here. There's the second Ravage. A good fight for Evil Geniuses. Now the Death Word is going out here. RTC taking a lot of damage down goes Bulba. And that huge smoke gang bang off in space as EGM gets caught by the birds. He might go down trying to make it away. Tethers to a creep, but nope. There's too much damage. He's dead. And a four for nothing fight for Evil Geniuses. Oh, well, there's the smoke gank that they needed. Jesus. Now they... Um, I mean, the, the problem is now is that this, they have to go back to their base. They yeah. can't do anything. They can't force any 5x. And so even though they may have gotten a lot of gold and experience from that, not being able to force 5x is actually a real problem because even if they're able to smoke and do it again, it doesn't even matter because they're going to have 5x though. Yeah, because the lanes are just way too far pushed in. They can't continue on forward here. Can't push into the base. They can't even kill a tier two. So can EG still win? So they are gonna have the double hex on universe fairly shortly. 
They have the hex on to RTZ, so they're gonna have three hexes, two ravages. Obviously the both the hook and the dismember from Pudge. So they're gonna have a lot of disables in these team fights and Quakefa honestly might just look towards a BKB at this point. Obviously not an ideal item to get on Necro. Not but ideal, but it seems logical and I mean he already has a hex, he already has the Agnims. He has big tools there, has a blink dagger for positioning, so BKB yeah. doesn't sound too crazy. So these team fights no longer as simple as they once were for Team Tinker once the Hex comes out from Universe. Wait, it actually looks like it's going to be a Lincoln Sphere. Interesting. Stop against the Duel, stop against Reaper Scythe. Yeah. There's not that much to disable. But, well, there, the problem is that there's Nasal Good to disable. My only issue with this item is that, sure, it might stop you from getting dueled, but... I think if you're not getting off really good Ravages anyways, you're probably not going to have a chance to win. And I think with the double Hex, it actually would have given them a better chance to win these team fights. but... Oh, boy. Well, oh, boy, a Refresher. Refresher Necro, two heroes are going to be deleted into the game in the next fight if he has his... I mean, in the last fight, he wasn't even able to cast it. Yeah, he true. died pretty instantly. So we'll see if they're able to get... I mean, if the fight goes the way Team Tinker wants, this game's going to be over. Yeah. Done. I mean, they're probably assuming. I mean, if Quickbus stays back far enough in these fights and waits for the Ravages, it's pretty much guaranteed that he's going to get his ult off at least on one, if not two targets at this point. So, that's probably the plan for Team Tinker now. But if there is another smoking coming out from the side of EG, it could be problematic if the Necrophos gets caught out again. Lance pushed a little bit further out than last time, but. EG still just, you know, the victims here of having to uh, just stay in their base, basically. <laughs> I mean, I really think this refresher on Necro on Quakeva is, like, really cocky, though. I feel like if you just buy a BKB, the game just sort of ends. But... Let's see. I mean, I Roshi definitely can see what you're scouted saying, out. They know this is happening. Can they do anything about it is the question. I mean, no Team Tinker is going to be standing way back. They do not want to get in this pit at all. Sing Sing can mostly take care of it by himself. There's no reason for them to commit more heroes into the pit, open themselves up to getting destroyed by Universe. They're just going to stand back. He's going to move forward, though. He gets a hex off on Pycat. They're going to try to bring him down before the duel. They do get it. And he buys back, immediately comes back in. EGM is stuck. Sing Sing here. Where is the Necropost? Finally coming in around the back. There's one side that takes down Fear from half HP. Quakeva is going to get second off. No, he's stuck. There's one Ravage. That might be enough to kill Sing Sing. Second Ravage might be on the menu soon. There it is. Right when the duel starts, Pycat not able to swing away. He's going to die in the duel. Arteezy's going to win it. And now they might die as a result of what you said. No VKB on the Necro. He dies at the end of the fight. Bulba, they have no detection again for Bulba. Is this even real life? Oh my god. This is actually so silly. And he's actually just healing right now. He's at full life now. Okay, so I understand why he got the Lincoln Sphere now. They're trying to Illusion. put Lincolns on whoever gets Reaper Scythe, but I don't actually think it works that way. I think uh, after you get the Reaper on you, put yeah, Lincolns on someone. I think it's yeah. when it starts. Bulba is dead. All right. That was a cute move in the Shadow Ambulance, but it did not work out. I mean, the bad news is that, again, EG has two heroes at their base just pushing out the lanes because they need this. They need the lanes to get pushed out. Roche is going to go down. Cheese is here as well oh as the Aegis. They're going to leave I, the I really for cannot Jesus. believe that they won that fight. And I honestly just believe it's because Necro does not have a BKB. They also decided to Reaper Scythe the Pudge, which is quite interesting to me. I really think they need to save it for either the Storm Spirit. I mean, what's Pudge really doing? I guess it's just the Storm Spirit at this point. But now he's got the Aegis, so we've got ourselves a game again. Lane is very pushed in still, and. You know, there is no Nature's Prophet. There is no one. Does anyone even have BOTs on the team? Nope. Yeah, and if we look at the net worth, wow. Look at that graph. Yeah, that fight. 7,500 in favor of Team Tinker to almost 10,000 now in the favor of EG. Uh, XP looks even worse. Now BOTs are finished so, up for TZ. Yep, Fear gonna get his Shiva's guard. So now he's getting exceptionally tanky. Removing a lot of the auto attack damage coming out from the LC and the Bristleback. Arteezy does pick up his own Lincoln Sphere. 
on top of 2200 gold so he's going to be fairly tanky in these fights and if he has the BKB and Lincoln Sphere on him he's going to be impossible to deal with during that 5 second duration where he wants to initiate he's using a lot of his mana here to farm but Koikva is in the back yeah, he has 15 charges start. it's pretty fun comes up fast. Well, and Zai actually also with a Lincoln Sphere so it looks like their plan is maybe to just stack all these Lincoln Spheres <laughs> Onto Arteezy. And keep him from getting scythe. Hmm. Seems like a real plan, I guess. I mean, the problem is is that they can actually pop them so easy. It's actually also, when they have a lot of Lincoln Spheres, it's very confusing when you're the player that is playing the hero that uh, is mitigated by Lincoln Spheres because you have to keep track of three separate Lincoln Spheres. So, you're like... They, someone says, oh, I just popped Zai's Lincoln Sphere, and then... So you have to keep track of three separate... Yeah, I mean, it's just actually really ridiculous. First tier two goes down for EG. They win this game, it will be nothing short of a miracle. And, uh, there are some rares on the line here. EG Storm is quite the hero in the late game. Yeah, I mean, when he gets those Bloodstone charges up, his regen gets ridiculous. He has the Lincolns now as well. Finds himself a double Storm damage room. Force, double damage. And so I think at this point, Team Tinker actually just have to wait out the Aegis. Yeah. And then uh, once they need, the Aegis... They need that Reaper Scythe to... Yeah, they need the Reaper really Scythe on the Storm. Yeah. I mean, I guess they do have two. They could use two on RTZ. But it's pretty and I think the, the main... Like, the best thing about these Lincoln Spheres is that they can't just blink duel you. Yeah, on like any of the heroes. Yeah. So that's a really big initiation tool lost for Team Tinker at this point. Sure, they can take off the Lincolns very easily, but it's not going to be a good source of initiation anymore. Two minutes left on the Aegis. Quick pause here. As we near the hour mark. In this, this has turned into Storm quite Spirit the game. Pudge epic battle between Evil Geniuses and Team Tinker it here. Is, it is worth noting that these mid tier 4 towers are quite low, 210 and 790 respect respectively, and I think there might be a point in this game where maybe Tinker try to bait a fight somewhere and then relocate the Wisp and Legion commander into the mid lane, because Legion actually does tremendous damage to buildings, sitting at about almost 400 right click damage, and with the heal, gaining a lot of attack speed, and I actually think if they were able to do that, they would actually just get two tier 4s, and then... At that point, once creeps ever get to the throne, I mean, the throne's just getting damaged, and they can maybe even threaten to end the game. And continuing, I mean, this game just... I can't believe we've reached this point. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe that it's gotten to a point where it's this difficult for Team Tinker to win. Yeah. I mean, you could point to the BKB, I think, on the Necro. That definitely seems like a real thing. Uh, but EG has just done a spectacular job in these fights. Mm. They've initiated them very well. Universe has done a good job. Uh, I mean, Universe ravages off. in that last fight just showed like really good patience. Yeah, he, he waited until the second duel. Yep. Or the duel, rather. So, here Waiting we are. For all 57 the BKBs. minutes in. And, um, what a game so far. Get back underway. Just a couple minutes left on this Aegis for Arteezy. He has 3,700 gold. I mean, I mean team... he's pretty much out of slots. On oh, no, Arteezy? Yeah. I mean, if, once his Aegis is yeah. gone, he can grab something, but... I mean, the good thing is, is that even with the Aegis being gone, if he dies once, he is going to respawn fairly quickly and does have those Boots of Travel, so... Yeah. Even if he Although, gets... let's see. So, he's at 15 charges, so that's 4 seconds of charge, so that's 40... 60... Uh, 60-something 60 seconds, and then... So it's 60 seconds off his respawn plus the uh, plus the 30, plus the 30 additional. So, so he's gonna 30. have he's gonna only have minus 30 and he's level 25. So he's actually gonna have a really long time, right, anyways. EG just still pushing creeps out here. I mean, I mean, imagine if there's only one racks down. How much different this game would look? Yeah, I actually think if there were only one racks down, that EG would actually be in a very good position right now. Unfortunately, that's think, not the case. Yeah. But yeah. Because be if there were, if there were only, yeah, if there were only one Rex down, then these tier four towers would actually be under a lot less stress. They would have, I mean, the one on the right would probably be at full HP, and the one on the left would probably be at like half or something. 
They're smoked up again. Can EG pull another fight out of the hat here? I, I mean, I really hope that Koi Club buys a BKB pretty soon because honestly, I don't want to say this refresher instead of BKB is losing the game, but it's certainly not making it, has not it seen easy. Them, yeah, it has not seen them win the game. And I don't think he hasn't he even. Okay, he might. Yeah, there we go. The BKB for the Dagon. Excellent choice. He's also going to have two BKBs for this next fight. Most likely going to be able to get two Reaper Scythes off finally. finally so, so And he's also going to have two Hexes. Comes down to the if he gets initiated on by a Hex. If he does, yeah. then he can still go down. There's still the double Ravage if they chain them together. Yeah. So there's still a lot of opportunity here for Koiko to get locked down in these fights. But any any sort of margin yeah, of I error, think, he'll get the BKB. I think, off. though, that if... If EGM is really on point, that he can definitely save Koikva from the first round of initiation. I don't think they can actually kill Koikva during a hex. If EGM is very on point with his relocate. EG, now the Aegis is gone. We'll see if RTZ is going to fill out the slot and what it's going to be. A couple options. I mean, you could go. F I mean, you could go for something like Scotty if he wants to go that route. I mean, at this on point, Legion? No, on the Storm to fill out his last slot. Oh. I would like to see a... Hmm, a damage item, personally. Maybe a Daedalus? They're converging in the top lane. Universe. This is not the mission they want. This is way too obvious now. Sing Sing Are they going is going to turn on one. They're going to go on him. He gets pulled back. Initiation's there. They get one Ravage off. Can they get two? The second one. There it is. Koifa still up in the air, but he's still very alive. They need to figure out a way to bring him down. There's the BKB, but is it too late is the question. Ethereal Blade comes out. Koifa now the BKB. He gets brought down. Fear able to bring him to the ground. Now Sing Sing on the way out. And what Team Tinker now in a lot of trouble. Again, they don't have detection for Bulba. Now it's Sing Sing darting forward. Pycat is back up in this fight. And now they're finally going to kill Bulba as he tries to escape. Artesian and Fear are on him. And what a wild fight again as it looks like EG win another one. And I have to say, that was a huge mistake from EGM. He had break too close. Yeah, he relocated way too close. And it actually, he was, they were, uh, the, sorry, the Necrophos was still in range of the Electric Vortex. He just had to make sure that he relocated far enough away that it would break the Vortex. And unfortunately for them, it was still pulling him in. And Tide was able to get off both Ravages before he was able to pop the BKB. Yeah, and when he's the only one there, so, BKB or not, he's going to die. Yeah. I need to be careful here. It does have the Lincolns, like we mentioned, so that duel not going to be quite as good. Maybe there's a room for initiation here. Arteezy, his mana coming back very quickly. 18 charges for him. I mean, have Tinker just completely lost control of this game? It seems like it. I mean, it's it's a balancing axe for EG, though. I mean, if they if the one fight goes badly for them, it's very easy for them to just lose. Okay, so the Lincolns is picked up on to Pycat, so maybe in this next engagement, they'll put the Lincolns onto the Necrophos to make sure that he doesn't get Storm initiated on and Hexed. And that could be the beginning of the end for EG, just because I feel like if they aren't able to actually get a good engagement onto this Necrophos and he's able to BKB at full life and get two Hexes off and two Reaper Scythes off, I think it's actually going to be very difficult for EG to win a fight. But crazier things have happened as we've seen in this game. So. Just in this game, though, so far, crazier things have happened. And EG looking for some sort of initiation here. They actually put the Lincolns well, that's, uh, on to PVD. He darts forward. Arteezy so far forward. Pycat does get off the BKB. They do have this member. They're going to lock him down. Koikva here, though, as well. This might not be the fight EG was looking for. The BKBs are ticking down, though, though. The refresher for Koikva is going to be available if he needs to use that. RC going to. Now the BKB almost done. He's caught. Silence brought down. Bulba now getting a good channel off. But nope, they have detection now. They can see him. He goes down. Sing Sing now in the middle of the fight. Arteezy going to work slowly but surely. Tinker is falling. Even with Koikva with a much better initiation. Universe gets hooked away in the middle of that Ravage. Now Arteezy is going to go down. He gets brought down by the duel. But Zai somehow gets a double kill. That's on EGM. Vistage going to go down. And in the end, it looks like a pretty even fight across the board, but Quakeva is dead. They don't get a scythe kill. PPD still alive, but it is a three for two. Actually kind of just let Quakeva out to dry there in that fight. It's a little bit odd. I actually thought they were just gonna relocate Sing Sing a short distance away so that they could re-engage. And, but in the end, they lose three for two. 
not the worst fight for Team Tinker. I mean, these fights are just so disorganized for Tinker at the moment. Yeah, nothing seems to really be going their way in these fights. Again, we see another fight without the Reaper Scythe used. RTZ back up very shortly after dying. I really feel like, okay, so we talked our, about it before. Once he's... Yeah, that's just so that he can have two BKBs and two Hexes. I actually think that's pretty pretty good. I mean, obviously not the most efficient item on Storm. It does give you the damage, but you're not really using the Refresher for any of your abilities. Yeah. Just for the But double items. Hexes is definitely but, not something to be trifled with. Now they yeah, have and four, double BKB. They have, yeah, and double BKB. They have four really strong lockdowns with, you know, two Ravages, two Hexes. Plus, Universe has, uh, or not Universe, someone mm -hmm. else has that Hex too, though. It's actually surprising to me that Tinker actually haven't tried for any backdoor plays. Because, let's say in that previous engagement, uh, if they just sort of bait the Necrophos into a lane, and then one of the lanes is pushing, they can actually just relocate the Legion Commander. Legion Commander pops the BKB, they get the two Tier 4s, and then they're threatening to kill the throne for the rest of the game. So... I think it's a combination of team like when you're team fighting this poorly, I think you just look for other ways to win the game when you're up two Rexes. Roche dies pretty much instantly to Sing Sing's tons of damage as well as all of Pi Cat's damage from the dual victories. So they do get the Abyssal Blade onto Sing Sing, but there are three Lincoln Spears on the side of EG, so he's gonna have to be quite careful about how he uses that. He's gonna have to use the goo first on someone. Clearing out the creep waves here as Tinker seem to be forming up for a normal push to the bottom, and that seems, uh... I mean, I think if they have a coordinated 5v5 fight, they can still win these fights. But... The fight at EG base, too, is, I mean, for them, if they win it, then the game's just yeah. over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that bad. I mean, they do have the cheese. Okay, that's actually quite important to have the cheese on Wisp, because he can instantly heal someone with massive amounts of life yep. in this team fight, so... He has 1,500 life himself, so there's a the limit there on the healing. But it is one and a half times, I believe. Well, we're going to so. move forward. He's going to catch Koikva. Is Arteez actually going to be able to kill Koikva here? There are so many arrows here. He is going to be able to get him. EGM trying to come in and save him, but now he's going to fall as well. And these pickoffs are just so brutal on the side of Team Tinker. Is EGM. He actually has to use the cheese. He's going to make it out of here, but using the cheese for it, is that worth it? This huh. game just got way harder, I think. Now with Necro dead for another 30 or another 80 seconds, no cheese for the next fight. What a I'm wild just game. I just don't understand what Tinker are doing right now. They know the only way that they lose this game is if they're constantly getting picked off, found alone, and they just keep getting picked. And it's not even just the last one. In the previous fight, you know, they only had three people top and then they got engaged on by all five members of EG. They lost the fight. And it doesn't seem like, you know, it would be one thing if there was a uh, a three v five in the top lane, and then your other two heroes were maybe pressuring bottom lane or the mid lane, you know, pressuring the tier fours. But it just seems like they're just not very coordinated in their decision making. Someone smoked up. These guys smoke up. Pie Cat and Bulba. Bulba but can they get anything the done? Jesus. I mean, they can't. They can't really duel any of these heroes with the. Sh they're going to have to lead with a cask, and that's kind of awkward. Uh, I don't think it's actually very reasonable to lead with a cask into duel. Maybe PyCat should have gone for an item that instantly disables the Lincoln Sphere. Possibly even something like a Force Staff, so he could blink Force Staff and then duel. Sort of like what you see on Bat Riders. Mm -hmm. um, just to give him, you know, a bit of kill pressure onto Arteezy, because right now Arteezy is playing fairly confident because how can they initiate on him? They have to pop this Lincolns and there's no items besides this Hex onto Koikva that instantly cancels it. Yeah. And now EG, they're pushing the lanes out. Well, Universe makes it out. They're trying to find a way to bring this fight to the Tinker base. With, they've been winning these fights. The only thing keeping them from winning the game was the positioning that these fights have been happening in. So now, they push out the lanes, they bring the fight to the Tinker base. This could be very dangerous for Team Tinker. Yeah, and the lanes are being pushed out by the birds from Psy. 
Zai pushing up the mid lane with the birds. The top lane is going to push into the base of EG, but it's probably going to be about another minute before those creeps actually enter the base My of EG. My cat is not here at all. He does not have a TP. He is not here. If EG knew this, I suspect they might be a little bit more gung ho on initiating here. He's guarding back and forth. He's trying to bait out some usage of spells here, but. Yeah, EG aren't going to be able to push this because once this top, yeah, the top lane is just pushing in too hard. It's going to reach the base in about 30 to 40 seconds. And then once it reaches the base, they're going to have to send someone back or they're at risk of losing a tier 4. They yep. can't really afford that at this point. Now they're going to back up. Yeah. EG making really an attempt there. Choice. They make an attempt there at a fight, but not initiating. They'd have to dive far into the base and bad things can happen if that if you have to do that. I mean, do you think if they had known that PyCat wasn't there, do you think they would have just gone for that? Um, maybe it's still a bit risky because they're they don't know the buyback situation on the side of Tinker. I imagine they assume that they assume that Koikpa had buyback, even though he didn't. They probably assume that Sing Sing, but rightfully so, Sing Sing does have buyback, and they are gonna get a second Heaven's Halberd. So that is an item. Does Lincoln's does Heaven's Halberd proc Lincoln's? I don't believe it does. That's not actually you, man. I have no idea. We're reaching the realms here. Oh my God! Dude, Tide has a Tide has a basher. <laughs> a basher Tide. <laughs> so this is the kind of clown status that this oh, game has reached. Oh boy. Hmm. Seventy minutes in now. Getting your money's worth for season number two. You can buy the ticket in the store. Go for it doesn't season say two. if it's disabled by Lincoln's or blocked. I mean by Lincoln's. That's unfortunate. Oh, actually, you just look up Lincoln's. Maybe that'll show. <laughs> We're doing some research here. <laughs> doing some research in the game. I mean, nothing's really happening right yeah, now. Yeah, they're so. just farming. Fear has an agonims, and uh, you bought out for that. No money left. It does. Okay, so it does block the disarm. So actually. Quite a good item, and I think it's actually a good item on both of these heroes, so they can actually use it to instantly cancel the Lincoln Sphere. So he is going to be able to blink, and then Heaven's Halberd, and then duel him, so... I thought there might be an interaction where it doesn't disable Lincoln's, because... I mean, Dota, there's That's actually Dota been too. so many... There's been so many changes, actually, to Lincoln Sphere, like, in the last year. It's actually quite difficult to keep up with all the changes. Well, it's like, EG is formed up. They're smoked up. They're gonna be trying. They're gonna. Like, uh, Sing Sing is starting to work on his Mjolnir. Arteezy going down to the bottom lane here. Gonna dart forward, trying to create some opportunity. This is what like a crazy thing this is the vault too. I know. Zai does pick up his own Mjolnir, so gonna have that additional right click damage as well as probably putting that buff onto Fear who's up to 4200 life from the flesh he gains. He's also gonna have and... Dismember regaining him. Oh, HP. he has the Aghanims. He got the Aghanims. Excellent. He is gonna be quite hard to kill. And honestly, Pudge is a really difficult hero to kill in the late game once he gets his stacks up. And he's got a lot of armor, so... A lot of effective HP on this hero and the additional magic resistance from Flesh Heap. Is, uh... And EG might be in a good position. I mean, they're getting really tanky on these heroes. It's quite difficult to kill our TZ. Well, they're and moving in on EGM. They they're using EGM. Hex on it. He is very dead. Gonna fall. Oh, maybe not. Mech, maybe gonna save him. Death Ward coming down. Universe comes in. Gets off the Ravage on Koikpa. He's stuck. He's gonna go down again without using anything. Sing Sing coming forward here. Our TZ needs to get away from him. Getting right click down. Now, turning back. Going to work. Halbert activated. There's the BKB by Bulba, but he's already used the death word. They're in full retreat. Zai darting forward now. There's the Shadow Element as he moves through. That's not going to work. Now Bulba goes back. Paralyzing Cast going to get procced on the Lincoln Sphere. Now it looks like Team Tanker. Everyone dying. Arteezy coming back. Bulba is down. Only two buybacks available here. Pycat, where is he? Way up in the north, up by the secret shop. Beer, back in the base. What an almost unbelievable. They do almost lose the tier 4, it does survive with 16 life. And, man, Koikva must be kicking himself for the, his performance in this game. It's very, it's very un -Quikva like Looks like Universe might go down here, it is gonna get dueled. He is dead. Yeah. 
Heaven Solver definitely paying off. Is able to cancel up that Lincolns and then get the easy duel off onto Universe, picking up the kill. And it looks like I don't even think any of Team Tinker are actually going to have to buy back. And I mean, that's just the advantage of being ahead two racks. Yep. So this is why this is such an uphill battle for EG, even though they are now very ahead in both net worth and XP. Actually closing this game out going to be difficult, but now Artesia has oh found no. Piecat. There's one. They disable the Lincolns. Does he have the pull? No, he used that to disable it. Now Piecat needs to be careful. As in comes EGM, Artesia turns on the BKB. Do they have enough damage to bring down Piecat? Artesia needs to be careful here. 17 Bloodstone charges. Gets over the hill. Amazing job there with that. He's out. They do lose the racks in the bottom lane. Fear moves forward. EGM, he's going to go down here. Piecat, he's going to die as well. The Ethereal Blade bringing him down. And EG have taken their first set of racks Wait. here at 75 minutes. Ethereal Blade is actually doing a tremendous amount of damage because he of has 200 his, strength. It's 200 strength. Oh my god. Are EG actually going to win this game? I mean, it looks like it right now. Wisp has buyback. Pycat does not. Arteezy is moving forward here quickly. Regening a lot. 17 charges on the Bloodstone. Even if he gets Scythe, he's... I mean, if he gets Scythe, he'll die for a while, but... No refresher, and oh boy. Pycat is disconnected. Auto-pause. And uh, some notes here from our stat man who had to leave as uh, he is quite injured, but he cannot resist himself. And this is the first Storm Spirit Refresher ever on record. And uh, I think it's quite good, actually. It, it seems to be actually, working out. It refreshes the Lincolns as well. So. Yeah. And third E Blade Pretty Pudge. Important. The other two are by Dendi with 100% win rate. And it has not been built since October 2012. <laughs> and again, all this is in pro play. And uh, that's pretty much the last time Pudge was played. Yeah. Ah, and, ah Kappa. I think he's played. I think Dendy's played it like two times since then, or something. Since they take away fountain hooking, it's like no. Uh. Please. Well, we're at the tenth longest game of 6.82 as of a couple of minutes ago. And the longest so, match okay. is 101. I mean, I don't think this game's actually going to end anytime soon because Tinker weren't actually forced to use any buybacks. So even if EG are able to win this next engagement, there's probably going to be a lot of buybacks coming out from Team Tinker. IO does, does buyback. Use Lincoln's popped on Arteezy. He's just bringing down the creeps here. Sing Sing. The biggest steal. Standing in the front. As Mjolnir. Almost ready to go. Oh my god. EGM. Alliance style is in the base. Taking the tier 4. That Did that is, just happen? Once. I mean, it only had 16 HP. Right. So. Arteezy now. Some... is Lincoln's up. Charging into the base. Trying to take down the set of racks. EG uh, trying to even up the rack situation. Okay. They do have a glyph, so... They need to go on RTZ. They can't just allow him to have this for free. Now he's going to move forward. Fear takes down EGM. Pulling up instantly. Universe, seven seconds till double Ravage. And if Team Tinker get caught here chasing EG, you know, it does not look like they're going to pursue. Yeah. But <laughs> Tinker actually just need to sit in their base at the moment. And is done there. it looks EG like gonna EG is actually going to get their hands on... They had one Aegis previously, but I think the last three or four Aegises have gone on the side of Team Tinker. But who's going to actually carry this on the side of EG? I mean, you could put Maybe Zai... Oh, he could put the refresher, the refresher on the Courier. Courier. But, yeah, he's going to do that, it looks like. So he's going to kill him... Well, not kill himself, but he'll die and then have the refresher close by so that he can give it to himself right when he respawns, use the refresher again. And he's going to be able to pop his BKB and Hex once again. They are smoked up on the side of Team Tinker. Coin for me. They could actually get this kill middle on Arteezy, but he does have the Aegis, um, so probably not the kill they want. <laughs> to find Zai has on a Rapier. Zai. This is not a hero out of his... I, you know, at this point, anyone could buy a Divine Rapier, well, but I was not expecting I mean, he that. is very farmed. He has, he has 2,700 HP. You know, he's got his 45 armor. With you know, the other thing is that Zai is definitely not a target in these fights. He's been living yeah. throughout them. So him having that Rapier, you know, he's not a priority. And because if course, they're prioritizing Zai, then that means Arteezy is going ham. Grave Chill does give you 64 attack speeds, so... What an unlikely... What an unlikely end to this game. This is the end. Rape your purchase by Zai on the Visage. And uh, I would be willing to bet there are not too many not too many rapiers on pro play on Visage. Oh no, if Koifa goes down here. He does have a buyback, I believe. He's dead. He does have the buyback. 
And you're right, man. I mean, he cannot be happy with the way he's been playing this game. Yeah. 12 and 11. He has died a lot. Been out of position a lot. 30,000 gold lead for evil geniuses. And, uh... I think this might this be might, over. They might just win now. I mean, I don't think they can deal with the Aegis. I think in a straight-up fight, they could still win, but... Man. Unbelievable game. 77 minutes in. Here in Dota Pit. And now... Arteezy is reaching the high ground, going to try to figure out a way to end this game. Going to work on the racks. One is dead. Now they pull Sing Sing back. That might be one of the more crucial hooks they've gotten thus far. Can they actually do anything to him? Is he is still alive there? Looks like he is going to back up. Necropos has to buy back. Universe moves forward. Sing Sing has exploded. Refresher Orb used there by Universe. There's another buyback on the Bristleback. Arteezy gets hooked back by Fear. A little miscommunication there. And I can imagine the things but that the Arteezy is saying. the racks are now saying. even. Yeah. Well, oh, they move forward. There's the Hex out on Fear. Universe oh, moves no. forward. Unfortunately, the BKB is used for Pycat, so he's going to work in the fight still. The Death Ward, Bulba, gets it off now. Very hectic fight. Fear's going to go down. Arteezy, though, going to work. Koikova, he might come back up and be able to Reaper side if he does. Maybe oh, the Divine's on the ground! Around. Divine is on the ground. Who has picked it up? Universe going to go down here. Now Arteezy comes back. Koik was in the fight, but he's BKB. They're hard pressed to kill him. Buyback's coming back. Universe is here, does not have a Ravage. Here, just to right click away, gets a bash proc on Sing Sing. Moving forward, Arteezy able to take down EGM. Bristleback dead as well. Necropost is dead. He's used to Reaper Scythe. I have no idea who he used that on. Highcat's still alive as well, but now they're just charging for the tier fours. They need to go heal up. Yeah. Refresher's I used mean, too. Who did he Scythe? they're really having a bad game. He, he Reaper Scythe here, but it got blocked by Lincoln's. Oh my god, and the EG won! GG, the throne is dead! What a game! Evil geniuses! Oh, unbelievable. With the most, one of the most ridiculous games I've seen in quite a long time. <laughs> the players with the banter, that's sarcastic. And oh boy. It's in the books, evil geniuses win! 2-0 here! A 459 CS Visage? Has that ever happened before? <laughs> I mean, he had more CS than the entire Team Tinker lineup. Unbelievable and I mean, game. Koikva definitely, like we said, can't be happy with his performance. I think had he had just bought in a BKB instead of going the Refresher, I think, honestly, Team Tinker just played a little too cocky in this game with their item choices and their play. I mean, they got picked out way too many times by the Hex on Storm Spirit, which was definitely the key item in this game. It was able to get them a lot of pickoffs against these BKB heroes, and I mean, Arteezy just played a really great Storm Spirit game, and honestly, I think if they didn't have this Visage, they probably would have lost the game, because Zai on his Visage was able to push out all these lanes with the Familiars, and basically at least keep the mid lane pushed, the top lane was always getting pressured by Team Tinker, but at least they were able to keep one out of the two Lurax lanes pushed at all times, so that was very important for them. Well, the game ends. EG takes the series 2-0 here in Dota Pit. Thank you guys for watching on what it said from High Ground TV, and thanks to our sponsors as well for bringing you this uh, wonderful game. Unbelievable series. I mean, EG stomping game number one, basically, but game number two... Looks much closer, and uh, I'm what is it with me? F4L, Sapphire, AMD, Twitch, Tesoro, and Sennheiser. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you next time here on Dota Pit.
Just use the block, she can get it again. Yeah, I'm gonna see something like no 